Hi, my name is Volker from STEM Imaging, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the modular embedded platform in the context of machine vision, deep learning, and artificial intelligence applications. We're going to address a little bit the history of deep learning and neural networks um, before going on to have a look at artificial intelligence application in the industrial environment. Um, after that, we're going to describe a little bit the artificial intelligence benefits that the modular embedded platform yields before having a look at a, a use case, the human pose estimation, which we used for a proof of concept that I will describe in some detail and give you the facts and figures that we derived from it before finally proceeding to our takeaways. Now. When talking about the evolution of artificial intelligence and deep learning, one has to keep in mind that we are actually not talking about something radically new. Even though uh, in the recent years it's been in the news everywhere basically, it's something that is rooted in the 1960s when first research on artificial neural networks was conducted. In the 70s, uh, the backpropagation learning was described and implemented. And then in the 80s, the um, neural networks basically met a snag when the computational power of the hardware of the time didn't keep up with the requirements of it. So in the 90s, we saw in, in the 90s we saw the emergence of uh, bridge technologies like statistical learning theory, uh, which yielded us um, bridge regressions and support vector machines for these applications. Before in the 2010 years, then finally deep neural networks emerged and gained quite a lot of attraction and attention. Um, and this became possible because around that time, hardware accelerators for deep learning became readily available. Today, it's safe to say that deep learning and artificial intelligence has entered the mainstream. One can see this by the availability of numerous toolkits, free and open source on one side, commercial on the other side like PyTorch or TensorFlow, Keras, CNTK, to mention just a few names, but also by the availability of pre-trained models for a wide range of applications like object detection, scene anal analysis, uh, segmentation, pose estimation, of course, that one can use to build upon. So one doesn't always have to start from scratch when implementing a deep learning application. So we are basically at a stage where everyone can use it, aren't we? Now, when looking at where artificial intelligence is currently being used in the industry, one notices that the, the fields of, of applications, namely material and surface checks, or traffic control, food and agriculture, sports and entertainment, just to mention the, the most outstanding ones, are usually those fields where classic methods like histogram analysis, blob analysis, measurement tools and so on did not yield the results that were needed in these fields. So there was a gap that the neural networks are now filling and where they are uh, thriving and successful. There is, however, no free, no free lunch in deep learning. You pay twice. You pay for the effort of training your deep learning model unless you can make use of one of the pre-trained ones. Plus, you pay in terms of hardware, because deep learning toolkits are usually very performance hungry. So they absolutely require either a powerful CPU or an acceleration hardware dedicated to accelerating deep learning applications, or possibly even both of them. And that's important to keep in mind because there are technologies that are not as hardware hungry. So when going to the low end, when it comes to performance, uh, there's also options beyond deep learning and CNNs that one can draw upon. Now let's have a closer look at our modular embedded platform. The benefits that our modular embedded platform brings about are first of all in its interface technologies that it supports. There's Geek-E and USB 3, which comes natively directly from the Jetson uh, system. But there's also a 10 gigabit Ethernet and a usable MIPI interface to which you can connect your cameras. All of these interface technologies are addressed with the same API with common vision blocks um, that allows you to 
code uh, for the same way for all the different um, interfaces and to do so in C++, Python or C Sharp. You can with Common Vision Blocks directly acquire the image data into GPU memory, speeding up the processing and uh, eliminating one unnecessary copying step. And you can easily interface to CUDA or one of the popular, popular deep learning toolkits as mentioned before. So what we do is we combine state-of-the-art image acquisition technology with state-of-the-art deep learning. The hardware acceleration for deep learning comes from NVIDIA Jetson's GPU course and more importantly, the Tensor course, which are available on Xavier NX and the Orin uh, system. This, and, and on top of that, we do have a decent CPU for menial tasks like image acquisition, post-processing of the deep learning results and visualizations. One thing to also keep in mind, you have a large community of users when going for the JSON platform. There's many users uh, that exchange ideas and code snippets and helpful hints on forums and websites that you can draw upon when implementing your own deep learning application. So let's have a look at one of the possible use cases of AI and deep learning, the human pose estimation. As we see in the video on the top right, um, what's happening here is that deep learning is being used to detect a few key body points like hands, feet, uh, some joints, the head. And from the location of these body points, a pseudoskeleton is then constructed. This pseudoskeleton can be used, for example, for quantitative analysis of training success if you employ it to sports. If you want to see and analyze a golf or swing or the swing of a batter in baseball, for example. The input may also be used for virtual try-ons where you build a, a 3D avatar of a person and uh, then dress it with uh, various options and clothes. Or it can be used, for example, to analyze the body pose to control a game like, like uh, the Kinect used to do. And there are in fact several pre-trained networks available for this type of application. There's open pores or PoseNet um, that you can draw upon, but be aware that most of these toolkits are actually not free for use in commercial applications and come sometimes with a hefty price tag. So let's build our own uh, pose estimation application with our modular embedded platform. Of course, we draw upon the image acquisition powers of CVB. And uh, for the pose estimation, we opted for TRT Pose, which is published by NVIDIA under an open source license, the MIT license in this case. Um, as it's based on the Tensor RT SDK from NVIDIA, it directly makes use of the Xavier NXS Tensor course. And it is basically a pre-trained ResNet type network with 34 layers, so it qualifies as a fairly deep neural network. We visualize the camera data and the pseudoskeleton uh, generated, generated by TRT Pose, and we then analyze the output of TRT Pose and use it as input for a very, very simple game. And all of this is implemented in Python and runs, of course, on the module embedded carrier with a Jetson 78 NX. So let's have a look at how it looks like and performs on in, in the video on the right you can see the actual game in action where it reacts to the pose of the arms of the persons in front of the cameras the jetson xavier nx comes with six nvidia kernel cores these are arm version version 8 cores so 64-bit arm cores running at up to 1.9 gigahertz the NVIDIA Volta GPU has a, a frequency of 1.1 GHz, comes with 384 GPU cores and, for this application very important, the 48 Tensor cores. We are using 2 gig vision cameras running at uh, stable 20 frames per second and they are delivering together a data rate of 150 megabytes per second to CVB Pi. And CVP Pi then forwards this data to the inference engine running with Tensor RT on the Tensor core. So there's from the inference practically no impact on the CPU load. The reaction to the results and visualizations are done entirely with the Pi game framework. 
And if we have a look at the load of the CPU and the GPU, we notice the CPU is running at a stable 50% of its maximum power. It's busy doing the image acquisition, post-processing the results and displaying the results, and generally the visualization of the game. The GPU, however, is running at 80%, so it's pretty busy. Um, it's doing the scaling of the images to the input uh, size needed by the inference engine and the inference itself. So, what can we, what information can we derive from that? First of all, I think I've described and shown that uh, the Stemmer Imaging Module Embedded Platform combines computational power with interfaces for industrial image acquisition, and that's the <clears throat> that's the key motivation behind the platform to combine state-of-the-art image acquisition and state-of-the-art algorithms. It also uh, does that at embedded form factors and uh, energy footprints. So it's fairly small, reasonably small for mobile and uh, um, embedded edge applications. Um, the energy footprint is at about 30 watt uh, tops. So it's really not very hungry, at least compared with a PC and uh, GPU. And it's therefore for us the go-to platform for moderate cost inference applications. If you are interested in learning more about the module embedded platform, feel free to contact our sales colleagues or head to our website where you can find a lot of material about it. Thank you very much.